Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what happens in photosynthesis. You should then be able to describe the factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis. Now I should point out that this is a tricky topic, so you might need to watch this video a couple of times. Ok, I'm showing you a plant here. This brings us to the first key fact about plants. Plants use light for their source of energy. The reaction that plants use to trap this light energy is called photosynthesis. So because photosynthesis takes in energy, it's an example of an endothermic reaction. So if you imagine that this plant grew from a tiny seedling, like this one, all of the energy that the seedling needed to grow came from the light energy trapped by photosynthesis. Photosynthesis takes place in the leaves of a plant, and leaves contain the green chemical chlorophyll. Chlorophyll can absorb light energy. So in the first stage of photosynthesis, the plant takes carbon dioxide and water into the leaf like this. Light energy is then absorbed by chlorophyll. This light energy is then used to convert the carbon dioxide and water into the sugar glucose, and here it is. In this reaction, oxygen is also produced. Now this is called the word equation for photosynthesis, and you're expected to know this. You are also expected to recognise the chemical formulas for the molecules in this reaction. The formula for carbon dioxide is CO2, and the formula for water is H2O. The formula for glucose is C6H12O6, and the formula for oxygen is O2. Now I should point out that this equation isn't balanced, but you're not required to balance it for your exam, so we're not going to look at that. As we saw before, in order for photosynthesis to take place, we need carbon dioxide and light. So the question is, what happens if there's not enough of these? We're going to look at that now. Imagine that I take a plant and I increase the light intensity, in other words the amount of light, but I keep everything else constant. I then measure the rate of photosynthesis at each level of light intensity. When the light intensity is zero, the rate of photosynthesis is zero. And that makes sense as plants need light to carry out photosynthesis. As we increase the light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis increases. That's because the plant now has more light energy to carry out the photosynthesis reaction, so the reaction gets faster. Now there's a key point here that you need to get. If we increase the light intensity, and the rate of photosynthesis also increases, that tells us that the light intensity was limiting. In other words, photosynthesis was not as fast as it could have been because there wasn't enough light. Scientists say that at this point, light intensity is a limiting factor. Now, if we keep increasing the light intensity, there comes a point where the rate of photosynthesis no longer increases, and it levels off like this. Now at this point, light intensity is no longer the limiting factor. Something else is now in short supply, for example the level of carbon dioxide in the air. We can now do the same experiment, but this time increasing the level of carbon dioxide, again keeping everything else constant. We get a graph like this. As you can see, the shape of the graph is exactly the same as the one for light intensity. As we increase the carbon dioxide level, the rate of photosynthesis increases. This tells us that carbon dioxide is the limiting factor. However, at a certain point, the rate of photosynthesis no longer increases, telling us that carbon dioxide is no longer the limiting factor. Now, there are two other factors that can affect the rate of photosynthesis. The first is the amount of chlorophyll in the leaf. I'm showing you here a leaf which has got patches of chlorophyll. Because these leaves can trap less light energy than normal leaves, they'll have a lower rate of photosynthesis. Temperature can also affect the rate of photosynthesis. As we increase the temperature, the enzymes involved in photosynthesis work faster, so the rate increases. However, if we keep increasing the temperature, the enzymes will denature, and the rate of photosynthesis falls. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on photosynthesis in my vision workbook and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Ok, so hopefully now you should be able to describe what happens in photosynthesis. You should then be able to describe the factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis.